Hey, what is going on YouTube? Hey, Aaron here. We are back, everyone. And guys, today we are in the Sovetsky Soyuz and what is probably the most underrated Tier 8 battleship. Now, of course, if you have her unlocked and you have played her, you know that she is anything but underrated. However, with the way that Tier 8 was released into this game, I feel like a lot of people end up skipping this line or these selection of ships, and a lot of them are pretty good. Now, there's a few things I want to talk about in this video kind of pertaining to battleship style strategy. And I feel like it is best described as a dance or talking to a guy or a girl at the bar. I've used this analogy before as we get a beautiful crossfire here on this Republic. Anytime you can get a crossfire like this where you are undetected, you should take the shot no matter what. Now, you can actually see that the Republic is turning out on the minimap there, but... That is 4,810 health that he will not really have back unless he wants to utilize a heal. And even then, you cannot heal that much of penetration damage. But anyway, back to the battleship analogy. It's like hitting on a girl or guy at the bar. It is a slow dance that you have to ease into. And I feel like you could you know, apply this strategy to multiple areas in your life. However, you want to be aggressive initially and then let them lead you feel out the situation, and then you close. Sometimes, as we get a nice little lucky citadel there across the map on a Vladivostok, sometimes you can't push in too hard too early. Sometimes you can go in balls deep right away, as a few of my ex-girlfriends let me know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but uh, you will see as that AL Chapiev gets the coveted good job. And as this Tulsa is about to find out, you do not want to push in so aggressive, so early, as we get two hits with one of those being an overpin. Those looked like they aimed or, or fell a little bit high, but these, oh, RNG, man, as you can see, I was having quite a night. This stream was actually captured from a while ago, but sometimes I just can't stand a salvo like that. A An American heavy cruiser sailing broadside, and he gets away with it. Now, of course, he's missing all but 7,000 of his health. And well, the RNG that I missed on that previous salvo, we get a little bit of it back on this salvo. Now, I don't know exactly what the trait of the Russians is. I've heard a few things, and I need to confirm this, but I have heard that they get increased accuracy inside 10 or 11 kilometers as we take nearly 50,000 from this Giuseppe Verde there. I, I don't know what this guy was doing. Paid actors, as some people will call it, but... I can't, <laughs> to me that should be a dev strike. I know we did get, of course, a beautiful salvo and he is continuing to sail broadside, but if people started paying for their mistakes like they should, then they would probably stop sailing broadside less. Anywho, we decide to angle here and a fun fact about the Sovetsky Soyuz as we get another two citadels <laughs> and unlock our triple reload and our first legendary damage mod there. A fun fact about the Soyuz is you can actually get your third gun on target inside of auto bounce region for most shells. And if you don't know what that means, is basically you can angle your third gun without giving up enough angle to get citadeled. Now you are right on the cusp, so if you decide to angle any more or your enemy has increased pen or potential commanders that increase your penetration, you could potentially be in for quite a surprise. However, we do finally get the remainder of the RNG we should have gotten earlier and tick our 6th Citadel and our 2nd kill very early into this game. Now I know what you're thinking, Aaron, those were absolutely paid actors, and I actually do have the Venmo receipts for those two gentlemen. Thank you, John and Steven, for uh, giving me these. No, I'm just kidding. People, I said that one time and someone actually believed it. Well, they play Legends, so we can't suspect that the IQ is, is too high there. But anyway, back to the discussion about battleship strategy. You notice that we initially took it kind of slow. We Played our flank, we moved in aggressively, but we didn't YOLO rush into that situation until we saw what we were up against, which was two players who were completing some challenge of die within the first five minutes. I don't know what they were doing. I, we, we all make mistakes, but again, I just feel like if you sail broadside that many times in a row, you would simple like pattern recognition would allow, you know prevent you from sailing broadside that many more times in the future, but we do appreciate it when it is the red team doing so. But talking about strategy, we have captured the sea cap here. Our team is doing a decent job over at Bravo and Alpha. However, you can see that they are sort of weak on that side. We have two ships eliminated, both of which being on that flank over there. 
So at this point in the game, I'm definitely focusing on trying to eliminate that Albemarle, who is working his way into our Bravo cap, but I am also thinking about developing crossfires towards the back of Alpha and defending B. You will see it later on in this video, but I just want to point it out, as I know that viewer retention time is sometimes midway through the videos. I don't take a direct path into B, and our team almost throws this game by slowly pushing into the enemy one by one. Now, it doesn't look like it at this point in time, but this was a much closer game than it honestly should have been. So, like I was talking about earlier and almost finalizing this point now, when you're playing a battleship, you have to put your ship in the right spot, utilize your health. As you can see, we've damaged ourselves quite a bit there, but most of that was fire damage from that Tulsa. And we've also dished out a huge amount of damage. The role of a battleship, as this Albemarle turns broadside between three or four other ships. I have no idea what he was doing. We get a little unlucky in the fact that most of his health was taken by that other cruiser and or battleship, but we do get the finishing touch with a citadel there for our third kill and seventh citadel. I know I talked about RNG earlier, and looking back on it, I actually did get some pretty nutty RNG because we have 20 total target hits, and seven of those are citadels, so nearly a 50% citadel hit ratio is is pretty nutty however i feel like it should be that way when you sail broadside especially to a battleship you should pay the price for it when battleships do what they're supposed to do the game is in a much better state we actually had a game in the vladivostok on stream and i'm thinking about making a video of it because we had a tier 6 cruiser broadside to two tier 7 battleships and he survived three four five salvos yeah it was just one of those moments where it makes playing a battleship just oh, very frustrating. However, on the opposite end of the argument, I see too many very questionable IQ battleship mains complain about everything under the sun on the forums. And guys, yeah, if you're constantly struggling in a battleship, just go back to what I said at the beginning of the video. This game is a dance. You cannot go in too aggressive. You cannot go in too timid. You have to use your health appropriately. You have to get angles. You have to use your brain. I know that is difficult for a majority of this player base, but here you can see we are actually slowing down a bit or at least angling out. Why? Well, because we have all of the broadsides of these ships here near the A cap. You can see that they did... Nothing to help spread themselves out, and now we are going to reap the rewards of it. Also, you will notice I am not YOLO rushing in, as I mentioned earlier, like our ships are going to do. We have the B cap, we have the C cap. As you can see, I am telling them to retreat here. There's no reason to push in. This is why I enjoy the domination game mode so much more than epicenter or capture the base as if you play the objective as we talked about in our epicenter video then you can reap the rewards of your intelligence or you know ability to understand and think in more than a simply sail straight forward and try and get kills manner because now because we have these capture points and because we can think to get outside of the lemming train that our team is kind of following into A, then we are able to reap the rewards of all of these broadsides. Now we are a little bit angled away. I could have pushed in a little bit more. We are also broadside ourselves, which is a position you definitely do not want to be in in these ships as this Vladivostok is going to find out very soon. But you will just notice that our team is kind of single file solo rushing into alpha without really paying attention to angles or any sort of conceivable strategy and this is sometimes what is very frustrating about the game your teammates do everything in their power to throw however seeing as we are the ones with a functioning brainstem we are out here kind of in no man's land really i'm not really near any islands i'm just kind of sailing around broadside but what i'm doing is i'm getting away from my teammates Sometimes you will hear me say, get away from me, and, you know, naval doctrine would dictate that all ships sail together in formation. I can't, I, I forget how long ago somebody told me that that was like proper naval strategy. I, I want to look back on that video, but uh, in Legends, you definitely want to be away from your teammates. As I've mentioned about five times now, we are able to get full access to a variety of different broadsides here as a majority of the ships, enemy ships at A are all focused on our ships sort of lingering around B or even worse rushing into to a there but here is just a perfect example of that we've kind of utilized this island cover we pop our accuracy plane we are working on this vladivostok 
And with some decent RNG, we get another Citadel to add to our total, but I wish there was at least one more Citadel there. It would have been a nice dev strike. But with that salvo, we tick over the high caliber mark and we are on our way to 200K. You can see all of the remaining health of the four enemy ships. I say four because our Bismarck did actually get a fire on that Vladivostok. And you can see his engine is still out from where we shot him. So they are now down to four ships. You will notice our position is a little angled out. I probably could have been a little bit more aggressive in this situation. However, as you can see, we get another beautiful salvo on that Palmer. I didn't need to be. The only thing we would be accomplishing by pushing in here is probably dying and maybe getting a little bit more damage and maybe one more kill in the process. Yes, I have three kills. There are four remaining ships. I could go for the Kraken. But as we talked about in yesterday's video, or the day before rather, getting the Kraken is cool and all, but I'd much rather get the win in a high XP total. To me, XP is the best indicator of how well you do. Now, of course, that can be manipulated. Certain destroyers hunting damage, getting caps. Cruisers hunting damage, not really helping their team. But for the most part, the best way to see how well you did in a game is to check that scoreboard at the end. Something else I want to point out is our health bar. We have used two heals on a double fire, I believe, earlier. But we have about half of our health remaining. You can see it's a rather close game. Use your health bar with, you know, in accordance with the timer to see how much health you should have. Now, if you can manage it pretty well, such as we've done, we've angled a bunch, we've been shot at a bunch, as you can see there. Both of those were bounces on our hull there because of our angled position. A huge shout out to our Lightning, despite him being a little aggressive at the end there. He did manage to get the kill on that Akazuki. However, as you guys will see here in just a moment, that Mines, which was last spotted rounding that corner, is going to come utilize his hydro and the lightning will no longer be with us. If he would have survived, I probably, and there was more time, I probably would have pushed in and tried to get a little bit more damage. Like I talked about earlier, utilizing your health bar in accordance with the time. And basically what I mean with that is in the first five minutes, use the first third of your health. In the second five minutes, try to use the second third. And in the final five minutes, try to use any remaining health you have. Now, again, this is just kind of a general rule. Of course, different games are going to call for different circumstances. But if you have all of your health remaining at the end of a close game, you're probably not utilizing your health, especially in a battleship, in accordance with a manner that is geared towards winning. Either you're hiding in the back or you're not pushing into appropriate situations. Now, of course, armor angling, utilizing heals, not putting out single fires is all going to help you retain more health. But as I explained earlier, we've been shot at a bunch. We've been set on fire. We have used our health appropriately. Now here, truthfully, I'm probably not in the best position. However, with the way that this game has played out, we have put ourselves in a position to easily secure the win. If this Plymouth, which is kind of lingering close to these last remaining ships, goes down, then we are the only ship left. This defensive position, which I utilize in most ships, allows me to get all of my guns on target. Not only that, it allows me to escape danger if need be. Now here, because we are not detected, I went ahead and decided to make the selfish play of turning around. Definitely a riskier play, all things considered. However, those remaining ships on the enemy team all have rather poor concealment, and you can look at their last known. They were not really close to our concealment ring, maybe a little bit, but the Palmer or Republic was sailing away. So safe enough to make this turn. However, like we talked about, if I had less than 40,000 health or less than half health, I probably would not have made this push as, you know, again, just thinking in terms of winning. However, there's only a minute left. And I know if I angle appropriately that these guys are not going to take my health. Here we pop the plane as the mines looked like he was going to turn broadside. It was really a decent shot. He did turn in, however. We still got a two, uh, you know, two or three decent penetrations or two pens and one overpen for about 12,000 damage there as we tick our Confederate medal. Mr. Mooney the Looney actually asked me in yesterday's video talking about Krakens and high calibers, what is the true medal that someone sort of knows what they're doing? It's not really an easy question to answer as I get one of the weirdest or stranger salvos I've gotten in a minute there. Three shatters and one bounce on a 
minds, which I can overmatch every part as we go over after this video. But I truthfully think that the Confederate medal is a good display of, you know, paying attention, shooting multiple targets, surviving enough to get the Confederate medal. But if you notice, we actually ended with around 16,000 health. So managing your health is a very important tactic and strategy to think about in in you know with your with your battleship play but a ggs to the plymouth he got a confederate and 2800 xp as well but first place there with 2866 and here is where i go over to the mines because i know that he has a 25 millimeter bow as well as 25 millimeter casemate i'm guessing it overmatched the casemate and may have hit the citadel belt i i have no idea uh the citadel plating um Sometimes I wish we had the or thunder mechanic, excuse me, of seeing where the shells, you know, hit or would have hit or, you know, what they would have done. You know, in War Thunder, it shows you, like, if you hit the captain or the, the gunner or something like that. But anyway, here is, <laughs> yeah, that was a fun one, though. A pretty gnarly game in the Svetsky Soy is what is probably one of the most underrated battleships at the tier. We actually have another video of me running her with the newer Azure Lane commander. And yeah, I was probably wrong about that commander. She is pretty tricky with those improved pen angles. But as you see, we don't need it in order to have a pretty good game but uh fun nonetheless we're grinding here i hope you guys are having fun i just got back from travel so maybe a stream later tonight when you see this video i don't know go out and get after life we're doing a bunch of videos we're working out life is good man i hope you guys are having a great day love you guys hey run out peace